Hey, Justin, doing any trick-or-treating this year? I'm 37. I'll put you down as a maybe. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you about our sponsor, World Anvil. World Anvil? The online set of world-building tools for game masters and writers? What about it? I just wanted to make sure that people knew the best way to build their world and showcase their designs with the TTRPG community. Wiki-like articles, interactive maps, historical timelines, and world-building templates. It also doubles as a novel writing software. Talk about organizational capability. It's so efficient. It's scary. There's a whiteboard feature that can be used to make expansive mind maps or tavern notice and quest boards for your players. You can link world articles and create interactive character sheets online. You sure can. And they've even added world building meta tools to help you start world building, keep your project on track, and grow your setting seamlessly. It's the clear choice for world building. All right. Anything else? Should I put you down for the costume contest? Build, secure, and showcase your world with World Anvil. Click the link in the description or go to worldanvil.com and use the promo code MANSHORTS to get 40% off any of the annual memberships. Man Shorts. Happy Halloween, players. It is I, your 7th or 8th favorite internet DM. This year, I got to thinking, we've made a lot of videos. I mean... A lot of videos. But you know what we don't have? We don't have a Man Shorts D&D Halloween special. Well, I think we should. So I asked the rest of the cast to go through some of our spookiest episodes and pick out their favorite ones. By the way, speaking of the cast, let's remind everybody who's who. Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Justin, the director and sometimes writer, mostly behind the camera guy for Man Shorts. Hi, everyone. My name is Melissa. I play Sarah in the D&D videos. Happy Halloween, shorties. J. Ray Hegley here. I play Lance. Hi, I'm Rigsby. I uh, play Waylon in Man Shorts D&D episodes. I guess we're just going to talk about some Halloween-y episodes. What do we got first up? We're going to kick things off with one of my personal favorites, Florida Edition Part 6. This episode came out the Sunday before Halloween 2019. Looking back, it's one of the stronger in the series, and I thought it'd be the perfect way to kick off the Man Shorts D&D Halloween special. Enjoy! So originally I had a horror campaign planned for this week, but the more I thought about it, I realized that nothing I could come up with would be scarier than this. I'm so excited. I'm so scared. All right, let's just do this. Roll initiative to see who starts this nightmare. 17. Five. 19. Lance, get after it. I am gonna dress my pets up for Halloween. Sounds stupid. Just a shot in the dark here. Are the pets alligators? Every other night of the year, they're gators. But tonight, Alberta is a hot dog and Albert is a shark. Why? It's educational. See, I make videos, I post them to YouTube, and they teach them how gators hunt. And you think that you'll accomplish said education by putting the alligators in Halloween costumes? Obviously. Not really. Waylon? I want to climb down a 30-foot well. Sounds dangerous. Any reasonable motivation behind this plan? Bragging rights? Didn't think so. How are you going to get down there? Uh, with a rope. (laughs) Give me a use rope check. Twelve. The rope snaps. You're trapped at the bottom of the well. I guess I'll just have to wait to get rescued. Oh, well. I walked into that, so I'll let it slide. But you're on thin ice. Sarah? It's Halloween and I'm sick, so I'm just going to let my son go trick-or-treating by himself. Sounds irresponsible. How old is your son? Six. So there's a good chance that he'll get killed or kidnapped. I don't know, maybe. I'm going to go take a nap. Lance? Any other plans? I got a 19 on my sleight of hand check to steal a scooter from Walmart. Yeah, uh, you succeed, I guess. Why do you need a scooter from Walmart? I have a date tonight. I need a ride to pick her up in. Got it. Waylon, emergency teams have removed you from the well. Awesome. Is there a uh, cop car nearby? Well, yeah, there's tons of cop cars around. The emergency service is just... Yeah, I'm going to steal it. Okay, well, there's like 15 police officers there. A couple of firemen, EMTs. On natural 20. Wow, you did it. Congratulations, you're now at the center of a high-speed chase. How do you like me now? I don't. Sarah, are you still napping while your child wanders aimlessly through the night? 
Actually, I need to go by Walmart and get a couple things. And by get them, you mean... Steal them. I figured. Roll to see if you can make it out of the store. Fourteen. The alarms go off. Loss prevention catches you before you can make it out of the parking lot. That's fine. I'll go quietly. They take you into the back room where they proceed to... And nineteen to attack. Attack them with what? Pepper spray. Waylon, after swerving to avoid spike strips, your patrol car gets stuck in the mud. You're under arrest. I'm also shirtless. Why wouldn't you be? Lance, upon seeing you and your date on a scooter from Walmart, a police officer pulls you over and arrests you both. Fine with me. And Sarah, I got a 15 to bang in the back of the cop car. Disgusting, but I'll allow it. The police officer stops the car and opens the back door so that he- Oh, I get out and run. Aren't you naked? Yeah. So? Sarah, the police have arrived to arrest you. I swallow all the molly I have in my purse. Molly? Like MDMA? Yeah, if I go back to prison, I'm at least getting high first. (sighs) Waylon, your court date is scheduled for the morning. I hope that you're not shirtless for that. What? No way. Thank God. I'm going to wear a shirt that says, F*** the police. It's a- that's enough. It's too much. I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. Happy Halloween, I guess. Well, that was a crazy episode. I think one of my favorites of all time has to be the original Halloween episode that we did. It was the first time that I got to be on camera, and I think that helped me with writing and and the, the way that we filmed it and the way that we concepted stories just from being in it, understanding what some of the actors were going through during the process. I also like that it was loosely based off of like those 1970s slasher films and like all the way up through the 80s, just kind of like that same storyline, but it was fun to, you know, take that and fit it into what D&D players might do. Good evening, everyone. Waylon couldn't be here tonight, so we have two new players with us, Justin and Darius. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Lance, last week your father's Suburban broke down on your way to the campsite, so you're now stranded in the middle of the woods. Great shortcut, Lance. Yeah, now what are we supposed to do? Just shut up a minute. Let me think. See, I know I let you guys talk me into this in the first place. I'm calling new. Oh, I'm afraid I can't let you do that. See, none of your phones actually have signal, and now it's starting to get dark. Can we see anything? Give me spot checks. Eight. Thirteen. Seventeen. Ten. Justin, you can see a light in the distance. It looks like it might be a small cabin. Hey, uh, guys, there's a light on over there. Maybe there's a phone we can use. (laughs) <laughs> you must be high if you think I'm rolling up on some stranger in the woods. He's right, guys. It's creepy. I don't like this. Just relax, sweetheart. You two stay here and let the men handle this. Don't worry, Sarah. It's gonna be okay. You two start walking. It's roughly a half mile to the cabin. So do you have a thing for Sarah or what? <laughs> oh, what? No. Roll a bluff check. Seven... 15 on sense motive. He's lying. (laughs) I knew it! Darius, Sarah, what are you two doing? I'm fixing my makeup. I'ma see if I can find out what's wrong with the car. So you're outside the car? Yeah. How many hit points do you have? 28? You're dead. What? Are you serious? The black guy dies first? Yeah. Sarah, the hood of the car slams down. Darius is nowhere to be seen. Well, obviously, I'm going to get out and look for him. Roll a will save. Twelve. You're shaken for one round. Lance, Justin, as you approach the cabin, you see that there's an old man that stepped out onto the front porch, and he's holding a shotgun. Hello? Who's out there? Whoa, he's got a gun. Chill out, bro. I got this. Hey, cobwebs! You got a phone? Huh? Sorry to bother you, but our car broke down, and we don't have any signal. As you get closer, you notice that his wrinkled body is covered in burns and scars. Oh, you boys shouldn't be out here. It's not safe. What's so dangerous about it? Um, I'm going to cast Detect Evil. It's evil as shit. Lots of people have died here. I'm charging that crusty old fucker. 
As you charge the old man, a large shadowy figure appears as if from nowhere, stabs you through the stomach with a machete. <gasps> what? Oh. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Am, am I dead? You're about to be. Any last words? I'm gonna look at Justin and with my last breath say, Run! I'm already running. Sarah, you're still looking for Darius, right? I guess so. You actually see him. He's about 50 yards down the road. He starts walking towards you pretty quickly. What? Checkmate. Darius, over here, quit screwing around. He doesn't respond. In fact, as he gets closer, you notice that it isn't Darius at all. It's a large hillbilly man carrying an axe. He's wearing Darius's face as a mask. Damn! Oh my god! Justin, you can hear Sarah screaming. Sarah! Sarah, I'm just gonna assume that you're running from the killer. Roll a percentile. 31. You trip and fall down. Oh no, help me! I'm coming, Sarah. The killer is now standing over you. He raises his axe over his head. I rolled an 18 on a tumble. Nice. You successfully roll out of harm's way, stand up, and continue running. Roll a percentile. 86. You trip and fall down. What the hell? Am I close yet? The killer is once again standing over you with his axe raised over his head. Justin, you can see this. You're actually within range to charge. Uh, 16. Before the killer can attack, Justin strikes him in the back and he falls to the ground. You need to get out of here. Go back to the car. I can't leave you. The killer stands and grabs Justin by the head. Give me a strength check. 17. He breaks your neck, and you fall to the ground in a heap. Jesus Christ! I assume you're running? Yeah. Roll a percentile. 93. Uh, you trip and fall down. Screw this, just kill me. Awesome! Everybody's dead. Happy Halloween out there. You know, some of my earliest memories of horror themes are episodes of Scooby-Doo. It was always one of my favorites, and pretty ahead of its time when you consider that it was trying to teach us that people are the real monsters. Anyway, I always wondered what a Scooby-Doo episode would look like, and for some reason I thought it would be a great idea to combine that with the idea of Dune edition. Scooby Dune. Also, doing the bit with Justin having Melissa's voice was really funny. And Rigsby did great as Fred. Check it out. Okay, not exactly the character choices I anticipated. But here we are. Hey, I don't know why you're looking at me, dude. Velma's my favorite Scooby-Doo character. What's your excuse? Uh, Shaggy is S-tier. Ever heard of memes? Well, I only picked Fred because I figured one of you would be Daphne. Yeah, looks like you'll have to hit on me. Thanks for that. I'm not gonna pass up a chance to hang out with my little buddy. The mystery machine pulls up in front of an old lighthouse. You've been hired to investigate a series of strange happenings. Ooh, what kind of strange happenings? Things keep going missing. Notably people. According to the owner, the last three sets of lighthouse keepers have gone missing. The police have no leads. Check your maps and make a plan. Well, naturally, I think we should split up. Daphne and I will go check out the lantern room. Friendly reminder, she has a black belt in karate. Hey, does this lighthouse have, like, a kitchen? There's a kitchen in the main house, yes, but that's not what we're- Don't worry. We'll, like, scream if we see a ghost. It's weird to rely on you for party progression, but what do you want to do? I'll start in the storage room. I'm sure I can find a few clues there. Okay. While Shaggy and Scooby look for food, the two of you enter the lighthouse and begin the ascent up the spiral staircase. Give me perception checks. Five. Eight. <gasps> I heard something. That's just the beating of my heart. I'm serious, Fred. It was awful. It's okay, Daphne. It's probably just the wind, or, you know, the lighthouse settling. What are you doing over there? What? Are you going to participate in this session? Whoa, like chill. I got a 15 to search for Scooby Snacks. You find a box of Scooby Snacks on a high shelf, and as you grab it, give me a deck save. Nine. A book falls and hits you on the head. Take two bludgeoning damage. Like, ow. And, like, who's Frank Herbert? Lance, we've reached the storage room. Also, it started raining. All right, meet me back here when you've checked out the tower. Got it. Let's go. Daphne is now frightened, but she goes with you anyway. Lance, as you enter the storage room, give me an investigation check. 29. 
how? I'm Velma. <laughs> what a nerd. You know, Fred, if you spent a little bit more time investigating and a little bit less time preying on Daphne, you might actually be able to help whoa, us with- Whoa, whoa. I'm not preying on anyone. Daphne's free to go wherever she wants. She just feels safer with me. That's not true, Velma. I'd be much happier with you. Hey, you guys can't talk to each other. That's like metagaming. <sighs> He's right. Daphne's on her own now. Anyway, with such a high check, you notice from across the room a corner of paper sticking out from behind a cork board. I'll walk over to it and see what it is. When you remove the paper, you discover that it's actually a photograph of Sarah. Like Sarah? Well, Shaggy. On the back of the photo are the words Kwisatz Haderach. Kawasaki who? You also notice that in the corner of the room is a large pile of what looks like sand. Sand? Why would there be sand in a lighthouse? I should go investigate. As you approach, give me a perception check. Seven. You detect a faint smell of burnt cinnamon. What is going on? All of a sudden, just as you reach the watch room, lightning strikes and the power goes out. Daphne screams. I'm grabbing her. Oh. Give me a charisma check. Nineteen. Oh, Fred. Thanks for protecting me. You're so brave. Ha, <laughs> Daphne. It's nothing to worry about. It's just a little thunderstorm. Lance, when the lights go out, you trip over a small rug and fall headfirst into the pile of sand which is now a bright blue. I can't see a thing without my glasses. Hey, did you hear that? The power went out. Hey man, like, who turned out the lights? A few moments later, the backup generator activates and the lights are on again. And oddly enough, it stopped raining. <sighs> what did I tell you, Daph? There's nothing to worry about when you're with Fred Jones. Fred! Look out! What now? She's pointing at two large creatures that are rushing up the staircase toward you. They look like saber-toothed tigers with bigger ears. I don't have a trap for this. Could I grab Daphne and make it up the ladder in one round? If you make the checks, sure. Give me a strength check to grab her and an athletics to get up the ladder. 17 on strength and 21 on athletics. What's up with the advantage? Oh, I get advantage on any checks that involve saving Daphne. Okay. You successfully make it up the ladder. Hey, if it stopped raining, can we, like, go outside? Go for it. You want to go outside? Let's go outside. Lance, as the spice flows through you, you discover that you no longer need your glasses, for you've been granted a different kind of vision. Jinkies! An unknown force is calling for you to seek out Shaggy, who is outside playing a game with Scooby, I guess. Fred, you saved my life. Jeepers, I thought we were goners. I got a 22 to lean in for a kiss. Oh, so you did. And Daphne appears just as eager as you. But just before your lips touch, a giant sandworm explodes out of the beach. Okay, let's do this. Whoa, how did you get in here so fast? I know everything that's going to happen all the time. 24 to initiative. Uh, okay. Well, as you see the sandworm explode out of the ground, you also see that Velma is rushing toward you. Shaggy, you have to save us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already know that. Can I just do my thing? <sighs> Go ahead. I got an 18 to mount it and a 30 to handle animal. I should have known this would happen. Then... I'll steer it into the ocean, where it will surely die. Well, Sarah swoops in and steals another last-minute victory. <sighs> Tell me about it. I was this close to sealing the deal. So, what was that kiwi horseradish thing? Kwisatz Haderach. It's from Dune. He's basically Dr. Manhattan. <laughs> Scoopy Dune. Aren't you worried you got something wrong about the lore? I'm sure the internet will correct me. Hold on. You're telling me that Shaggy from Scooby-Doo is the Kwisatz Haderach? Mm-hmm. He's the Highlander too, apparently. Like, zoinks? So there's no masked villain. All the Dune stuff was real? Technically speaking, the land that the lighthouse is on is prone to temporal rifts, which is actually a pretty good segue into what we're playing next week. They let me play Velma in that one, which was a personal career highlight for me. But if you want to talk about really spooky ones, you should check out the Vampire Edition because I look like a background extra from The Lost Boys. Mm. 
I like the wardrobes in that one. Particularly, I remember, again, Jay had on these sunglasses and someone in the comments made a remark about him being like a Elton John vampire. And that was really hysterical. That cracked me up. Chew as much scenery as we possibly can. Doing the old style like Bella Lugosi. Like that stuff is just so much fun. Your story begins in the basement of a dilapidated Victorian manor at the edge of a small town in the American Northeast. I am so pumped to play this edition. How has it taken us this long to play this? Probably because I knew you two would dress like dorks and, oh, look at that. I was right. Hey, I'll have you know, I spent quite a bit of money on this costume. It put a bit of a dent in the old blood bank. You suck. The sun just finished setting. Give me dex checks to see who wakes up first. Blah. <laughs> Thirteen. Seven. Eighteen. Waylon, your internal clock notifies you that night has fallen. As you lift the lid to your coffin and slide it open, give me a perception check. Fourteen. As you step out into the damp basement, you hear the faint sound of wolves howling. The children of the night. What music they make. Lance, your eyes pop open. And as you exit your coffin, you see that your friend Astaroth is awake as well. Feeding time. Let's get out there and raise some hell. Typical of the younger generation to treat our gift like some sort of superpower. Uh, yeah? Immortality is rad. Maybe we can find a new initiate tonight. Eternal life is not rad. It is torment. And the fact that you are so obsessed with infecting others proves that you do not fully understand it. <sighs> Whatever, dude. Let's see what she has to say about it. That's a good point. Sarah, you're awake now. As you step out of your coffin, you look around to find- Oh, no, no, no. Coffins are gross. I sleep hanging from the ceiling. Right. You drop down between these two. Hey, Akasha. Mr. Buzzkill over here wants to know if you like being a vampire. We don't have time for riddles, Marco. We need to feed. And why must we feed? It's the hunger. It controls us consumes us. Look, Lugosi, if you want to sit here and lament, that's up to you. I'm going hunting. Fantastic. Let's go. As to Roth? This curse is my fate. But yes, I'm going. Actually, everyone give me perception checks first. 14. 19. 9. Lance, you and Waylon don't hear this, but Sarah, as you begin climbing the stairs, you hear a clamoring coming from the floor above you. Someone's here. Ooh, maybe it's some college kids. If there's any extra, I get to make them one of us. One of us. One of us. <sighs> You're an abomination. Before any of you can react, the door at the top of the stairs is kicked inward. Wood splinters rain down upon you as a silhouetted figure steps into the doorway. Breaking into a vampire's lair is a very bad idea. The figure steps forward into the candlelit room. It's a teenager wielding a large wooden stake. You recognize the cross around her neck? It's Becky Winters, the vampire slayer. At last, redemption. Kill me first, Becky. In my torturous existence. I've always wanted to taste slayer blood. I heard it's sweeter. As you say that, a large explosion blows a hole in one of the basement walls as two more figures step inside. I got a 13 on my lore check. Do I have any idea who these guys are? You recognize them as Glade, the Sunshine Walker, and Dan Pelsing, both notorious vampire hunters. Everyone roll initiative. Four. Boom, 16. 20. Becky also got a 20. What's your dex mod? Four. Becky's is five. She lunges forward, stake first, and makes purchase on your left shoulder. Take six damage, and it's your turn. I'm going to use pain in the neck. As a full round action, I can aim for her jugular and get a plus two to attack. 22. Ooh, normally that would hit, but unfortunately for you, Becky's wearing her silver cross. As you lean forward to bite, candlelight bounces off of it and into your eyes, dealing 14 radiant damage. Becky's got to go. Okay, it's Glade's turn. He's going to lunge at Lance and attack with his sword. And he hits, dealing 17 damage. Ow! Dude, we can talk about this. I can give you the dark gift and you'll live forever. Glade is a vampire. He's already immortal. 
However, when you say this, it does cause Dan Palsing to recite a prayer and fire his crossbow at you. What's your AC? It's a 16. But if I'm getting attacked by a vampire hunter, I get a plus two due to plot armor, so it's 18. The crossbow bolt just barely grazes your right shoulder. You only take two damage, but it did leave quite the searing mark behind. It's your turn. Sweet. I turn into a bat. Beta. Well, excuse me if I don't want to die. I happen to like this living forever thing. What does turning into a bat do? Uh, Other than gaining a fly speed, I now am considered small, and I get a plus two competency bonus to my AC. All right, Waylon, you're up. How big is the room? Is this a fireball question? No, my Nosferatu circle has a 100-foot AoE. I just want to make sure I get everybody in it. Yeah, that'll hit everybody. What's it do? Any enemies within the circle have to make a DC 17 will save. Those who succeed remain unaffected, but those who fail are under my full control. Well, Becky failed, and Glade failed, and Dan Palsing failed. Oh, nice. Well, the uh, spell lasts for eight rounds, so I'm just going to make them kill each other. Cool. Well, I'm not going to roll all of that out. We'll just end it here. Great job, Waylon. They're all dead. The hunt is complete. Our anguish is sated. What are you doing? I'm the one who's supposed to kill everything. Yeah, what's up with the sudden violence? What happened to the philosophical approach? Vampires gotta eat, bro. Drink? Eat. Well, that went about as expected. And before you ask me what we're gonna play next week, let's just say it's going to be quite hair-raising. I cannot believe we didn't put my boy Vampire Hunter D in there. It's a travesty, really. Sure, everybody loves vampires, but what about werewolves? We had Jay slowly transforming into a werewolf uh, scene by scene. Every time the camera went back to him, he had another element of his werewolf-ness on. He had a particularly hard time picking up his dice to roll with the long claws that he had. And his wife, Jane, was on set that day helping to kind of dress him uh, between the scenes. And if I remember correctly, we were using double-sided sticky tape or something to adhere the fur to him. And there was a chest hair pulling out incident. I don't remember remember if that was before the scene or after um, or if we got that in the bloopers at all but I just remember that being a really fun one to film so check did you hear that it's getting dark this is stupid we've been wandering around these woods for hours we're never gonna find him I didn't want to say anything in front of the nuns but if that priest really got taken by a werewolf we'll be lucky to find anything at all If it's getting dark, we should probably just head back to the village and get a fresh start in the morning. Everyone give me perception checks. Uh, 14. 12. 15. You all hear a horn sound in three short bursts. You recognize that as the signal for all search parties to return to the village. We'll go back. The three of you begin your short trek back to the village. The sun has now completely disappeared behind the thick foliage, and a sharp breeze passes over you as you walk. You know, I've been thinking. How do we know the werewolf isn't already among the villagers? That's a good point. It does seem like a really tight-knit community, though. Like, I doubt someone could keep a secret for this long. That would depend on how often they transform. And how long they've been a lichen. Yeah, and how do you suggest we determine that? We certainly won't find it in the ambiguity that is the game notes. I never said you couldn't ask questions. Besides, if this scenario was going to work, I had to make sure it was 100% meta-free. Consider it a metagaming exercise. I see what he's doing here. Let's talk to the villagers. As you enter the village, you notice a small group of people gathered around something. One of the women in the crowd screams and faints. I'm gonna walk over and see what they're looking at. As you step up, you notice a pile of bones stretched across a piece of burlap. It looks like one of the groups has brought back the remains of the priest. So if the werewolf is one of the villagers, they're not very good at covering their tracks. Unless they're hiding in plain sight. Is that all there was in the burlap? Just bones? There is a small journal. I just sent it to you. Sure would have been nice to have this before. I'll be reading this. So who exactly is in the group that found this stuff? The group that brought back the remains consists of two nuns, Sister Julie and Sister Alice, a young boy named Gordon, and a middle-aged man named Thomas. He's a lumberjack. Okay, so we need to separate them and get their stories. I'll talk to the nuns. 
Excuse me, sisters, would you mind stepping over here and answering some questions? Give me a charisma check. 13. You seem trustworthy enough. They'll talk to you. The moon is beginning to rise. Waylon? I'll talk to the lumberjack first. But I do want to keep an eye on that kid. By the way, Sarah, you could probably tell, but that journal's written in code. Already deciphered it. I'm working on the riddle now. All right, Lance. What do you want to ask the nuns? Where exactly did you find the remains? And how can you be sure that it was the priest? Alice begins to cry, and Julie squeezes her hand in hopes to soothe her. Alice then holds up a cross on a silver chain. I got a 16 to investigate. Is there anything special about it? You do see that the cross is engraved with the initials of the priest. Uh, do I see that? You're in the middle of a conversation with Thomas the Lumberjack right now. Also, per your request, your only other visual concern is Gordon. Yeah, but it's pretty obvious. Well, not really. It's a pretty small cross. Uh, Sarah, you almost done with that journal over there? That depends. If you keep distracting me, it's going to take longer. Lance, all at once, the nuns begin screaming and run away into the woods. Well, that's weird. Can I see what made them do that? You can give me a perception check with disadvantage. Sixteen. Hey, Sarah. Slowing me down. Three. Talk to the lumberjack or you'll end up like the priest. You have no idea why they ran away in fear. Huh. What could it be? I figured it out. It says enemies are closer than friends. Lance, what do you... Of course. What? Oh, damn it! Now remember. I know. I have no idea why that happened, so I guess I'll just keep looking around. Lance, as you scan the area, you lock eyes with Gordon, who, upon seeing you, immediately begins crying and runs away. <gasps> Do I see that? You did, actually. In fact, Sarah and Thomas saw it as well. Sarah, you and Waylon just give me flat D20 rolls. 11. 14. Thomas goes first. Lance, what's your AC? My actual AC, or... I'm not really sure how to answer this. Oh, never mind. Just give me a deck save. It's a four. Several things happen in rapid succession. The nuns scream and run away and are shortly followed by Gordon. Sarah, you finish decoding the journal. And Waylon and Sarah, you both now realize that Lance is a werewolf. I'm always the last to know. Well, although I guess my character is the last to know in this case. No one reacts faster than Thomas the Lumberjack who, upon seeing you in mid-transformation, lunges at you and slams his axe into the top of your head, splitting you in half. Yeah, I really thought it was going to be you. Me too. Nice curveball. Thanks. Sorry, buddy. I know it's been a rough couple of weeks for your characters. I know how you can make it up to me. We can play Florida Edition next week. That sounds fair. Kepler's sighs are perfectly timed in Halloween 4 specifically. Melissa's doing the statue joke and she laughs and then Kepler's just like, that's why Kepler's the best actor among all of us. Layering every costume. It was incredibly hard to get into. So as I mentioned last week, this area is prone to temporal rifts. There's a low hum in the air, and the three of you begin feeling woozy. Oh, what's... what's a temporal rift again? It's like an anomaly in the space-time continuum. <sighs> That's just theoretical. This isn't Star Trek. Star Trek is science from the future. Hey, you're you again! Oh yeah. What, uh... what are you? <gasps> I'm J... I'm Jake the Snake Roberts. What's going on? The three of you are currently experiencing the present and the past simultaneously. The past being the 1980s. I love the 80s. Hey, you're just some old lady. <laughs> I uh, think she's Sophia from the Golden Girls. And you're Doc Brown. Great Scott. Your story begins in a dungeon. Each of you are in a cell. You've been arrested for playing D&D. What? In this version of 1980s America, religious propaganda surrounding Dungeons and Dragons bubbled over into legislation. The game is now illegal. Now this is the scariest Halloween ever. The punishment for offending is death. You'll be executed in the morning. We gotta get out of here. Okay, well, Sophia is built for diplomacy, so maybe I can charm a guard. You don't see any guards. I got this. I got a 15 to attack the door with a measured knee strike. Um, okay. 
Take four bludgeoning damage. The door doesn't budge. Wow, that didn't work. Well, uh, Doc's an artificer, so I could create some thieves tools, but it'll take me an hour. We don't have that kind of time. Whoa, Whoa. who are you? Name's Pliskin. Call me Snake. Maybe you could save the hero speech and just get us out of here? Sorry, old lady. It's not that easy. I can only offer guidance. Guidance? Guys? I have ranks in Druid. Oh, great. Maybe you can purify our food and water. Or I could cast Guidance on myself and have a better chance of wrecking that door. Or you could uh, wild shape into something that could fit through the bars. Like, I don't know, a snake? I would like to wild shape into a snake. Good choice. You're outside the cell now. You find the keys and release your companions. Nice work, man. Um, you changed again? <sighs> What is this? Looks like you're a Double Dare contestant. As Lance frees you from your cells, a door on the opposite wall bursts open and inward. Combat time. Two gigantic gargoyle guards burst into the room ready to attack. Roll initiative. Nine. Eighteen. Fifteen. Okay, Sarah's up first. I'm going to cast Hideous Laughter. What does a gargoyle say when it sneezes? What? Statue. The gargoyle guards are now prone, howling with laughter. And since they can't take their turn, Lance, you're up. Uh, I'm going to use his trachea as a footstool. Oh, damn. Eight. You know you can roll again. You get advantage on attacks against helpless creatures. Oh. Seventeen. You also get crit damage, so go ahead and roll that. Her. What are you doing? I'm going to baseball slide into the other one's face. Roll with advantage. That's a 10. 60 damage. As you step on the gargoyle's throat, his trachea collapses. He's dead. 15? That hits. Looks like it's time for a physical challenge. 54 damage. The heel of your boot makes purchase with the gargoyle's face, caving it in. Both guards are down. They'll send more when these two don't come back. We need to move. She's right. Let's boogie. Hey, you know you're a hot dog now? Finally. We'll just go through the door they came in. The door exits into a long hallway, which is lined with cells, each containing nerds of all age, race, gender, and size. All of those people are in prison for playing D&D? Yep. And just as you are sentenced to death, so are they. You two find the way out. I'm going to hang back and save these people. Well, that's, uh, nice of you. Don't get too excited. You two are my red shirts. Also from Star Trek. With Sarah staying behind to save your fellow nerds, the two of you continue down the hallway, and as you reach the end of it, give me dexterity checks. 16. 17. The wall at the end of the hallway explodes and out steps Alf. Alf? How about a hug for the old Alfer? Is it weird to anyone else that the prison full of illegal D&D players is run by gargoyles and aliens? That's pretty meta. Who are you, Mark Zuckerberg? <laughs> right, because he, he changed the name. You were right. This is the scariest Halloween ever. Hey, guys. Heard you're fighting a Malmechian. Hey, Snake. Hey. You know you're a hot dog? Oh, I know. Well, you're covered in condiments. Maybe you could use that. Before we roll initiative, you can each take one action. I'm going to roll all over the ground. As you do, the ground becomes saturated with ketchup and mustard. Lance? I'm going to cast We All Do Things Differently. What the heck is that? Any enemies within a 20-foot radius... They got to charge right at me. And the floor is covered in condiments. So when Alf charges, he stumbles and falls toward you. And as a reaction, I can hit him with the DDT. Ooh, nat 20. <laughs> well, that hits. And according to the lore, no one ever gets up from a Jake the Snake DDT. Are you kidding me? Did I at least save the prisoners? You did. The two of you see a large group of nerds charging down the hallway, hoisting Sarah in the air as their queen. <sighs> well, that session was all over the place. So are your costumes. Hey, don't king shame me. Fortunately, that flight suit grants you the ability to pilot a plane, which is good because that's the only way you're going to get out of here. Jeez, I'm glad D&D is legal. Me too. Happy Halloween, everybody. Stay safe and keep it spoopy. It's crazy that um, we've put out so many videos in the past seven to eight years, you know, just going back and 
and watching them has been a good trip down memory lane. Anyway, the next video that I want to talk about is the Everything Everywhere All at Once episode. I really enjoyed putting that one together. Probably one of my favorite movies to come out in the last 10 years, but just because I got to go through all the footage and find those little moments to put in the montage sequences where they're powering up and, and gaining all the experience, I just, I had a lot of fun doing it and it was kind of just like a, a neat way to pay homage to that film. And I hope you guys enjoy it. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's really good. Last week, you successfully defended the castle long enough for the Plane Machine 2.0 to become operational. I slept for 36 straight hours after that. Hey, uh, where's Waylon? I thought you might ask that. Ralph, you want to take this? Oh, sure. Uh, remember when I said that the Plane Machine 2.0 was better than ever? <gasps> Did you kill Waylon? What? Good golly, no. Nothing like that. So, where is he? There was an anomaly. See, the Plane Machine 2.0 allows for at-will plane jumping. Plane jumping? So he's just on a different plane? Technically, no. He's not on a different plane. We are. Everything looks the same. Oh, it might look the same, but you can bet your biscuit it's definitely different. Lance, give me a perception check. 32. Wait. Why is it so high? Upon further review of your sheet, you discover that your character is very different than normal. I didn't even know the numbers for strength modifiers went that high. Are we in a superpower plane? Like a power gamer plane? Nope. In this plane, Lance is the overpowered character, which means that you- Have a 26 in charisma? Are you serious? He can't be serious. You hear a loud crack and see a flash of light before- I'm a cyborg. My guns are my arms. Whalen? I think is is that you? Oh boy, it's happening. The planes are colliding. What does that mean? It means that other versions of Waylon are being forced into this plane. Everyone roll initiative. Uh, nine. <laughs> Sixty-two. Twelve to initiative. Two. Lance, you're up. Oh. Hmm. Okay. okay, so just to clarify, we are. Fighting Waylon. This version of him, yes. Okay, I guess I'll shoot him. You have a plus 10 to strength, and you're gonna shoot him? Yep. This is stupid. Do you have any idea what I could do with that power? Well, you don't have it this time, Sarah. So it's Lance's turn to save the day. Nat one. Your shot misses Cyberpunk Waylon, ricochets off of a metal pillar, and hits Sarah. What a hero. Cyberpunk Waylon, you're up. I got a 17 to hit the guy that shot Sarah with my shotgun arms. The guy that shots, you know me. My name's Lance. Ralph, it is your turn. I'm spending all of my turns to fix the machine again to get us out of here. Again. And 25. Noted. Sarah? I have no idea what to do with this nonsense character. Just do what I would do. No way. I guess I'll cast sleep on him. That works. Cyberpunk Waylon falls asleep, and as he does, he fades back to his plane. What's the deal, Ralph? I think I figured out the problem. All I gotta do is... Oh, dang. Never mind. I just brought in another Waylon. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Another flash of light, another Waylon. Or, according to his character sheet, tear it. Tear the teeth, Yates. That sounds familiar. I'm getting a serious case of deja vu. Can you just punch him already? Sarah, you know violence isn't always the answer, right? It is when your character is a killing machine. Should we shoot him? I'm thinking about it. I got it. Oh, pickles. I don't got it. More and more Waylands begin appearing, all of which are hostile. I want to build a trap and try to capture all of them. Now you're just trolling. I am most certainly not. I am just trying to show you that there are alternative options to brute force. We can argue about that later. At the moment, we are being attacked by every version of Waylon all at once. Wait a minute. What? I have an idea. Okay, while well, she's doing whatever it is that she's doing, I would like to use my scroll of mass suggestion on the gaggle of Waylands. Okay, well you still have to roll to attack, and it's gonna be a pretty high check considering the sheer number of Waylands. In Lance, these guys <laughs> are anything <laughs> Hold on. What if I use all of my muscles to charm them? It would be like a persuasion check, except I'd use strength instead of charisma. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'll allow that. Are you kidding me? Can I do that? Absolutely not. You were a dragon last week. Just let him enjoy this. Oh, 29. The Waylands are somehow transfixed by your bulging muscles. Sarah, what have you been doing, by the way? I'm going to use craft advanced technology. Y you're using a skill? Wow. Um, give me a craft check. 27. What are you making? These. Earbuds? Sarah, when I said there was another way of playing, I didn't mean we should- Just put the earbuds in. How do I know that I can trust you? Watch. See? Everything's okay. Fine. Anybody want to explain what that was? I created multiplane earbuds. They allow us to tap into the power of every character we've ever played all at once. This is awesome. I have stats for alligators, T-Knuckles McGinty, <gasps> Bork. All right, gang, I got it. Just had to switch out some ones and zeros. Easy peasy. We can go home now. But I just, what about the earbuds? Looks like we don't need them. Sorry, friend. Oh, okay. I guess. Ralph activates the plane machine 2.0. In a few moments, you'll all be- Stop. Wh what? Hey, Sarah. Yeah? It's murdering time. Really? Well, I am going to hit Florida Whaling in the face with my haymaker. <laughs> Yeehaw, nat 20! <sighs> Here we go again. Okay, we gotta stop doing these marathon sessions. But... All of the Waylands have been returned to their planes. That was so much fun. Did you did you did you guys see me bite paranormal Whalen? I got ectoplasm like all over me. Yeah, that was pretty insane. Hey, Lance. Yeah? Thanks for that. No problem. Well, what do we do now? We've gotta find the real Whalen. And then we take down Barry. That'll be fun. See you then. Hopefully you watched Pirate Edition on YouTube and not the way my character would have. Ahoy, mateys. What's on deck for today? Hold on, you meant like Johnny Depp pirates? I thought you meant Somali pirates. Why would I say that? I thought you said Pilot Edition. This hat cost me like eight bucks. Uh-huh. Lance? I didn't even know we were playing d and I thought we were going to download movies illegally. Whoa, dude, not cool. Yeah, you wouldn't steal a car, would you? That's enough. Just use the characters you have. I don't have a character sheet, so what do you want me to do? Your story begins in a seaside tavern. The bar is full of pirates and ne'er-do-wells alike. A large bearded man approaches your table. Is he friendly? Make sense motive checks. 17. I still don't have a character sheet. What, what do you want me to use for a modifier? Okay, Lance, you don't even know the guy's there. Waylon? I don't even have sense motive as a skill. All my stats are built around flying planes. Sarah, the man seems nice enough. Ahoy, patrons. Are ye in search of adventure? I guess so. What do you have in mind? I'm assembling a crew and we're leaving in the next 10 minutes. Are any of you skilled with a blade? Um, I found an old swashbuckler character. Can I use him? Sure. Do you have ranks in Duelist? <laughs> I have four levels in it. Roll a diplomacy check. 14. The captain is impressed with your skills. Waylon, is there anything you'd like to do? Well... You do pilot a ship, so I could offer to be the helmsman. The captain agrees. The three of you make your way to the ship and set sail. What are you doing? I, I guess I'm steering the ship. Roll a navigation check to maintain your course. 16. You'll be able to stay on course for the next few hours. Guys, we should commandeer the ship. Well, uh, how many pirates are here with us? Besides the three of you, there are five other crewmen, plus the captain. I don't know. This might be a bad idea. 
Yeah, what's the big deal? Why don't we just stick with the captain? Look at me. I'm the captain now. The three of you were overheard by one of the other crew members who promptly alerts the captain of your mutinous plans. I got a 15 on my climb check. Can I get up to the crow's nest? I want to try to hide below deck. Actually, you and Sarah need to make reflex saves. Six. Eleven. Before the two of you can react, you're seized by the rest of the crew. The captain approaches you. So, you thought you could have yourselves a mutiny, eh? I spit in his face. He wipes your spit from his cheek and laughs. Ha ha ha! Send them to Davy Jones' locker. Does an aid in aviation do anything? Nope. The two of you are being led to walk the plank. Lance, the other crew member is now climbing the mast to get you. I'm going to cut down the mainsail. Fifteen. That hits. The mainsail falls from the mast and lands on the crew members below, covering them. Now's our chance to get away. Before anyone does anything, there's a loud explosion and the ship rumbles. A cannonball has ripped through the hull. You're sinking. Who attacked us? I guess we'll just have to wait and see next session. Good. That'll give me time to write a pirate character. (laughs) Oh, that sure was a lot of fun. You know, sometimes you record an episode and you don't feel that good about it, and then you see the final copy and turned out pretty great. Paranormal Edition is a perfect example of that. First of all, it was originally called Ghost Hunter Edition, and in the first script, there were no real directives for Lance being possessed. In the final script, I did give Jay a little bit more direction, but he elevated it to a level we did not expect. (laughs) Your production van pulls up in front of an old Victorian house from the 1800s. An elderly man is waiting for you. Uh, hello, sir. We're the investigators from PAL, the Paranormal Anomaly Locators. He smiles. Oh, joy. I'm so happy to have you. Things have been really strange in my house for the last few years. Strange how? Well, doors open and close on their own. Things get rearranged. We hear strange voices at night. We brought all the latest equipment. If there's something here... We'll know. The man welcomes you into his home and shows you through all of the rooms. He stops at a door at the end of a long hallway. He's afraid to go inside. Uh, what's in there? Well, that's the room where the old owner died. He was poisoned. With that, the man scurries down the hall. Hmm. Gonna need an infrared in there for sure. Got it. What time is it? It's approximately 10 p.m. Well, I guess we'll just wait for the witching hour. You all spend the next few hours getting your gear set up and... You have a last-minute snack. Mr. Wallaby made you cookies. Before you know it, it's 2.59 a.m. Here we go, pals. Let's hunt. I'm going to do some EMF readings in the hall outside of the poison room. Give me an investigate check. 14. The needle on the reader starts to bounce around a little bit. What are you two doing? I'm monitoring cameras. I'm on audio. Guys, I'm picking up a reading. As Sarah says this, the lights start to flicker. Hello? Is anyone out there? Through your headphones, you begin hearing faint whispers. Give me a will save. A six. We'll come back to you. Waylon, all at once you feel the air around you go cold. I'm going to make my way towards Sarah, but I'm looking through my camera viewfinder while I walk. The bulbs and all of the lights surrounding you begin exploding, sending shards of glass flying at you. Take five slashing damage. Okay. I'm gonna run. Sarah, the door next to you starts violently rattling. It seems as if it's gonna fly off the hinges. Time to leave. Before you can do that, the door blasts open. Give me a strength check to see if you can keep yourself from being sucked into the room. 12. You do manage to grab the door frame, but you notice that your grip is slipping. Waylon, as you round the corner, you see Sarah clinging on for dear life. I'm gonna try and pull her back into the hallway. Five. You grab her arms, but you do so awkwardly. In fact, it loosens her grip further. The two of you are sucked into the room, and the door slams shut behind you. Great. Just great. I can't see anything on my camera. Maybe it's gone. As you say that, you see Lance. But he seems... different. Hey, buddy. You okay? Hello, friends. Allow me to introduce myself. P. Tuckett Farnsworth. What's the P stand for? Puckney. <laughs> right. What'd you do with Lance? Well, he's safe. 
<gasps> for now. Out of character, I want to say that I'm recording everything. What can we help you with, Mr. Farnsworth? Well, you see, <gasps> I had some unfinished business that I needed to take care of before I crossed over, and I needed a corporeal body to do it in. Do what? I need to get rid of Mr. Wallaby. Mr. Wallaby? Like the owner of the house? It is my estate. <gasps> You've been dead for a while now, I guess. It matters not. What matters is ridding this estate of that foul man. Mr. Wallaby is a saint. He made us cookies. Very well. Either you help me kill him or I kill your friend. The two of you look on in horror as Lance's head tilts to the right. It looks like it could snap at any second. Okay, we're in. Uh, what? We can't kill someone. We're not going to. Follow me. You wait here. We've got to get something out of the van. You approach the van, and you note that the ghost is watching you carefully from the house. I'm going to pull out my emergency trunk and open it. You see three backpacks, each of them equipped with a hose and a long wand at the end of the hose. Proton packs. If he asks... They're flamethrowers. You make your way back to the house. The ghost is waiting for you. Those look like no weapons I've ever seen before. Are you trying to deceive me? Don't worry. These things shoot fire. Hope you like your wallaby barbecued. I'm gonna call Mr. W and tell him it's safe to come back home. It takes about 20 minutes, but after a while you see car headlights pulling into the driveway. Mr. Wallaby steps out. On my count. He approaches the house. The doorknob twists. One. The door opens. Two. Mr. Wallaby steps inside. Prepare to die, Wallaby! Ha ha ha! Three. Light him up. 21 to attack the ghost. What? 18 to attack Punky or whatever his name is. Globs of light burst out of your packs and bounce all around the ghost, but they don't seem to be doing anything. Strange. This almost always works. You fools! I'm just gonna hit him with my camera. 24. That hits. Ghost Lance falls to the ground. Wait a minute. I'm gonna walk over to Ghost Lance, grab him by the hair, and pull his face off. Nice. When you pull on his face, it slides up and off of his head as you realize that it's a mask. Mr. Wallaby walks over, shocked. Mrs. Wallaby? Now that's a twist. Mrs. Wallaby says... That's right. It was me all along. And I would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for you men. Yeah, yeah, we get it. Wait, if you're not Lance, where is he? The two of you hear footsteps coming down the stairs. Hey, guys, I haven't been able to get, like, any recordings on this thing. The the batteries keep going out, or... What's, what's going on? Not much. We solved the mystery. Oh, well, damn it. Let's just go to the next house. Mr. Wallaby thanks you all profusely for your help. You exit the house and head toward the van. Well, that was eventful. Lance, as you get in the van, you catch your reflection on the side mirror. Your eyes quickly flash a shade of black as you hear a voice that says, No one suspects a thing. The Last of Us episode. There were two things that really got me. Chaz with the plan on his head. The other thing in the gag reel, <laughs> when I said snoozy, it was so funny to me. I like that we don't take that stuff too seriously. It's silly. It's all silly. Your story begins 20 years into a post-apocalyptic future, wherein the human race has been overrun by an infectious disease that turns people into fungus zombies. I don't know if either of you have played the games or watched the show so far, but this is going to be fun city. I don't really get what all the fuss is about. It's just another show about zombies, right? Well, Sarah, it's not really about the zombies. It's about the people. We're the real monsters. The three of you are camped in what was once the art history section of the Jacksonville Public Library. Everyone give me constitution saves. 15. 12. 8. Okay, Waylon, your hunger is bearable, but Sarah and Lance, you both begin to experience physical hunger pains. Each of you take four damage. And we're completely out of food. Are we just supposed to starve to death? Sounds better than being ripped to shreds by infected. Wait a minute. Which branch of the library is this? The main one, downtown. We're not far from the football stadium. Hey, 
Yeah. Yeah, maybe we could find some food there. Or some survivors. At a minimum, I guess we could get an overview of the city. Let's do it. Just so you know, it's about two o'clock in the afternoon. You might want to wait until it gets dark. What are we supposed to do? You know, back when this thing started, back when I was a kid, Fedra thought my blood could have been the cure, seeing as I never got sick. Uh... Yeah, that's what they told a lot of kids. That's what they told my son. Never saw him again. Okay. What's going on? This is called roleplay, Sarah. You know, the other, larger part of this game. They would have killed me and drained me. But I made it out of there. Barely. That's pretty heavy, dude. Hold on. If you made it out alive, that means they're still after you. Relax. They think I'm dead, all right? They caught up to me and firebombed a Walmart that I was living in a few years ago. I made it out of there, too. Barely. How me of you. They say we're supposed to be the lucky ones. But how many more am I supposed to watch die? As many as it takes to make things right. Yep. Pretty existential. How's the time skip coming over there? Oh, there's no rush. I'm enjoying this character development. Uh, all right, let's keep it moving. Um, uh, it's nighttime now. Everybody give me perception checks. 14. 6. 21. Sarah, you don't hear this, but Lance, you and Waylon each hear what sounds like a large vehicle approaching. Someone's coming. Can I look out of a window or something? Sure. As you peek out one of the windows facing the street, you see two large military trucks pass by. A few miles down the road, they stop, and the men jump out of the vehicles and begin searching buildings. <gasps> Fedra! Finally, something to kill. I'm pulling my gun on Lance. I thought you said they thought you were dead. Whoa! Whoa! You need to listen better, okay? I didn't say that they thought I was dead. I said that I thought that they thought that I was dead. Hey, tryhards. I don't think these government agents are going to care who thought what when they're loading us into prison cells. How many of them are there? You count six, but it looks like there's more. There's probably ten. You two are going to have to make a run for the stadium. What do you mean, you two? What are you going to do? I'm going to draw them in the other direction. Worst case, I buy you some time. Absolutely not. It's out of the question. We go together, or we don't go- I'm already gone. Running at him, guns blazing, screaming freedom. She shouldn't have done that. Yeah, well, she did. We can either sit here crying about it, or we can take advantage of the window. It's safe to say the Fedra agents will be preoccupied for the next several minutes. Give me athletics checks. 17. Ten. The two of you burst out of the library and make your way down Monroe Street toward the stadium. You both manage to keep a solid pace. What if she's lying? What if she turns on us? Even if she does, could you blame her? Wow. Uh, Lance, what is your AC? 18. Why? Because you just got attacked by an infected friend. And now you're bleeding out. <gasps> oh no! Oh no! 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 Not now! No! <gasps> Not like this! <gasps> Tendrils. Can I shoot it? You can take an attack action before initiative, sure. <sighs> Nat 20. That, of course, hits. Roll damage. Right. 14 times 3 is 42. Nice shot. The infected is dead. Again. Is he going to make it? <gasps> With my dying breath, I just want to say it's a pleasure dying alongside you. I'll see you. On the other side. Tendrils, tendrils, tendrils. Alongside me? What, what is he talking about? He's talking about the sniper on the nearby roof that just crit on the back of your head. And you're dead. So should I roll initiative or... Oh, Sarah. I'm really going to enjoy this. Fifty-one. That's the last one. Somehow you managed to kill every Fedra agent alone with a single shot rifle. Unfortunately, that's all for naught, considering your character was bitten last night. You've just turned into a runner. So that's the story? Everyone just dies? Pretty much. You know, it's more than that, though. It's, it's really about the helplessness we feel without the structure of society. And how our human nature can prove even more dangerous than external threats. The desperation of losing our favorite characters just 
sort of reinforces how bad the apocalypse would be. And a reminder that without each other, we're completely alone. So what are we doing next week? Something magical. Whatever you do, make sure you watch this video 11 times. Well, gang, the time is finally here. It's the first day of Conspiracy Con. Your airport shuttle drops you off at the Port Cochere of the Jacksonville Marriott. So where do you guys want to start? Um, there's a JFK assassination reenactment at noon. I can't do it, man. I've got the chemtrail seminar at 12.15. It's the main reason I'm here. Okay, well, I really wanted to check out that Denver airport diorama, so we should split up? We could do that. Yeah, let's just meet back here at 1 for the false flag luncheon. Really? You're going to split the party at a conspiracy convention? Hmm. It sounds like the powers that be have a problem with our ability to think independently. Typical. Sarah, you make your way over to the display. Make a reflex save. 13. Before you make it to the diorama, a man and a woman stop you. The woman hands you a flyer. Excuse me, miss. But are you aware that we've never landed on the moon? Duh. That footage was obviously manufactured by Hollywood to convince the world that America won the space race. Uh, roll a spot check. Fifteen. You notice that they're each wearing bracelets embroidered with the letters F-E-S. The Flat Earth Society? Oh my gosh, you guys are Flat Earthers too? The man laughs. <laughs> Who isn't? The Earth is clearly a flat disk. It is so good to be surrounded by like-minded individuals. Yeah, it's an echo chamber, all right. Lance, you're doing the chemtrail thing? Uh, yeah. I actually brought a fog machine. I'm gonna fill the room with noxious fumes. <laughs> that sounds malicious. Why? To illustrate a point. I wanna show how easy it is to manipulate people by altering atmospheric conditions. Are you trying to kill people? <laughs> no. The smoke only causes slight dizziness and some nausea. I got an 18 on my craft check to activate it. Well, you've successfully put everyone in the room in danger. Good job. Thank you. Waylon, did you learn anything at the JFK presentation? You know, I knew most of it, but I did pick up some interesting tidbits about the time travel aspect. Great. Roll perception. 12. As you exit the meeting room, you hear a pst from the corner. As you turn, you see a shadowy figure in a dark trench coat. He waves you over. I got a 14 on my sense motive. Does he seem trustworthy? He's a shadowy figure in a trench coat. He, you're right. I don't know what I was thinking. I walk over to him immediately. When you reach him, he looks around nervously and says, do you know why we're here? Uh, to celebrate confirmation bias through cultural reinforcement? Yeah, I thought so too. But this convention is not what it seems. What do you mean? A trusted source of mine has told me that the organizer is actually a high-ranking member of the Illuminati, and that this entire event has been systematically designed to document and observe truthers. My God. I've got to tell the others. I've got to find Sarah and Lance. Roll a search. 19. You find Sarah. She's standing on a giant map of the Indian Ocean. Sarah, what are you doing? Oh, just ruminating about how MH370 was hidden and then reintroduced as MH17, then shot down over the Ukraine, all to conceal the truth about HIV. We don't have time for common knowledge right now. We've got a problem. Where's Lance? Oh, he went to that chemtrail seminar. Um, it's in conference room B. As the two of you approach conference room B, you see that the door is closed. Smoke is pouring out of the bottom. I kick it in. 20. Naturally. The door bursts open and smoke pours into the conference center. You notice that inside the room, the floor is covered with unconscious bodies, and Lance is passed out in the corner. Lance, wake up! Oh, thanks, buddy. But I'm already woke. All right, Waylon, tell us what's going on. The convention's one big ruse. We're being watched. You know, I thought I saw a reptilian earlier, but I just chalked it up to cosplay. 
a conspiracy con conspiracy? Guys, we can't leave. We've got to find out the truth. We'll see, Lance. Next session, we'll find out just how deep this rabbit hole goes. It, it's really interesting going back and watching some of these, especially really old ones. The difference in camera quality, lighting, just how much makeup stuff we did. You know, few things are scarier than murder. And our players discovered that firsthand when they traveled back in time to 1888 Whitechapel, London to investigate the Jack the Ripper murders. 90s edition part 5 might be my favorite episode of all time. The acting is good, the pacing is on point, I'm particularly proud of the edit. Specifically the sequence when they first arrive in London. Now if you haven't seen it, you're in for a treat. And if you have, enjoy it again. Last session, the three of you visited 18th century America. Are you ready to go back to 1997? You know, guys, we call this 90s edition, but we don't really spend a whole lot of time in the 90s. Oh, yeah. Why don't we just call it, like, Time Traveler Edition? Because I wrote myself into a corner, and now for continuity's sake, I have to call it 90s edition. So we can go anywhere or any when I vote Ancient Rome. Are you out of your mind? Why go back when we can go forward? Uh, what, why don't we go to, like, year 4,000? You could have a roll-off to see who gets to pick the next destination. I'd like to point out, I'm, I'm the only one at this table that hasn't screwed up time travel yet. That's true. Waylon, roll with advantage. 12. 18. 4. 19. Waylon, where are we going? Whitechapel. London. 1888. 1888? Isn't that the height of the Jack the Ripper murders? Waylon enters the data into the machine and poof, you're there. Why did you want to come here? <sighs> to hunt down the most notorious serial killer in human history. The most notorious? Um, hello? That's debatable. Does anyone else think that this is a pretty dangerous place for me to be? Who's worse than Jack? Well, if you're going on victims alone, I mean, Harold Shipman comes to mind. Yeah, but he's only popular among crime buffs. What about Ted Bundy? Now that's a household name. So no one cares that there's a very real possibility that I'll get butchered? Wait, she's right. We could use her as bait. Yeah. That's the most misogynistic thing I've ever heard. She could probably pass as a prostitute. Never mind. That is. So you guys are going to use Sarah to lure Jack out of the shadows. Is anyone listening to anything that I'm saying? Speaking of listening, everybody give me a perception check. 17. 8. 10. All of you hear Big Ben ring to signify that it's 3 a.m. On the third ring, Waylon, you hear the faint scream of a woman. <gasps> the Ripper! The game is afoot. I think I'm just going to stay here and let the Hardy Boys do their thing. You're well within your right to do that. Although I will remind you, you'll be entirely alone. Fine. I'll go. Waylon, you follow the scream through a series of zigzagging alleyways. Sarah, you and Lance follow closely. As you round the corner, another scream. You all hear it this time. I got a 15 on my perception check. Can I hear where the scream is coming from? You can tell that the scream is coming from behind a small wooden door to your left. Do you really think it's him? Well, it could be a trap. We can't be sure. But if we never open that door, we'll never know. Sarah, give me a dex check, please. Four. A dark figure steps out from the shadows as a leather-gloved hand covers your mouth and nose with a chloroform-soaked rag. Wow. What a twist. I got a 17 to break down the door. You kick open the door to reveal a small room. On the other side of the entrance is a bloody bed, occupied by the lifeless body of a woman that neither of you recognize. <laughs> bloody bed. Get it? Bloody bed? I'm not there. 20 to investigate. Is there anything I can take for forensic analysis? There's a bloody scarf. Forensic analysis? Dude, it's 1888. And we have a time machine, my good sir. If we take this back to the future... Then a lab could analyze it and determine the killer's true identity. Precisely. Brilliant work, sir. The two of you notice that Sarah is missing. It must have been Jack the Ripper. While we've been studying this crime scene, he's gone off to create another. No shit, Sherlock. We've got to save her. It'll have to wait, Lance. We're done for the night. See you next time. I'd also just like to say thank you.
to everyone that watches our show. Nice to know that this dumb thing we do is something that people really enjoy. Well, that's all we've got for you, folks. Next week, we'll be releasing the Trade Saga, and after that, we get right back into episodes. Hope your Halloween is safe and spoopy. And good night. Mostly, I'm fortunate that I've been able to ignore the coordinates. I got a history of being insubordinate, but what it means gonna be when the fortune hits? Like, dang, he said he would do it, and he really did it. He really committed. The kid was a kid, and we should have listened instead of calling him a degenerate. Been independent, I'm into administering a percentage of them in a dome. I'm winning attention again and again, and I got him grinning when I enter the room, bringing the boom. One of a kind, I'm not here to change your mind. I'm here to remind you that finding the fire inside you is what's gonna keep you alive. Baby, like, yo, ain't you like 35 years old? How you been living with the flow so cold? I tell them that I keep warm with my alchemist fire. I stay warm with my alchemist fire. Baby, like, yo, ain't you like 35 years old? How you been living with the flow so cold? I tell them that I keep warm with my alchemist fire. I stay warm with my alchemist fire.